Welcome to the Trend Talk. We are your host, Val Hernandez. And Maravina Jaimes. Today we talk to Los Alejandros, the filmmaking team of Kevin Alejandro from Lucifer and his wife, Leslie de Jesus Alejandro. They talk to us about their award-winning film, Adult Night. Then we'll talk to an actress who has steadily done it all. Theater with Chita Rivera, several cartoon characters, including Dora the Explorer's mom, a showstopper in the hilarious binge movie, and the recently announced season of CBS's All Access, Why Women Kill. Versatile actress, Eileen Galindo. So don't move, we'll be right back with Los Alejandros, Kevin and Leslie Alejandro. You know our first guest from Southland, Parenthood and the comedy drama, Lucifer. We wanna welcome Kevin Alejandro and his wife, co-producer and co-director of their new short film, Adult Life. Welcome, Leslie and Kevin. Hi, guys. Hello. Thank you for having us. Thank you so much for having us. Of course. It's so great to meet both of you, and congratulations on your film, Adult Night. I have to say, though, most couples may think that working together may be a little bit of a hell. <laughs> but in your film, you're actually working with your co-star from Lucifer, Leslie Ann Brandt, and you're being directed by your wife, Leslie Alejandro. Okay, what's going on here? <laughs> <laughs> it's just the way the stars align for us. You know, I, you know at first when, uh, I'll, I'll speak, you know, on my from my perspective, at first when we decided, hey, we want to we want to direct something together, there was a little bit of that trepidation at first and within my mind of like, man, I hope, you know, because I, I hear the same things, you know, couples working together, you know, keep, you know, sometimes maybe you should keep that separated. Um, but we both invested into the idea. We both uh, understood that we wanted to do something together, and we and actually the excitement of, about it all actually overshadowed any kind of fear that I might have had. And um, it was a real, it became a real opportunity for us to understand what we both do, what our strengths are as directors. You know, Leslie's a, a great director. I feel like I'm getting some really good legs and understanding my own style as a filmmaker, as a director. Um, so it would give us an opportunity to really lean into our own individual strengths. And, um, you know, and in creating something fun and lighthearted and working with a co-star like Leslie Ann Brandt, someone who I, I love working with and someone who I, I, I think I work well with, um, really created a nice, comfortable, um, ch yet challenging space for us to, to be creative together. Leslie, <laughs> do you want to say something on that? Yeah, I, I, you know, of course, those kind of fears always uh are, can be concerning at first, but I think we really wanted to do something fun. And it also helps that we, the script that we had get, that we were given um, was a script that Kevin had asked a friend of his to write a couple of years prior. And by the time that we had figured that we wanted to do it or had the time to do it when we came back to LA from Vancouver, uh, that's when we knew that we wanted to do something together. And so, the script was originally meant to be more half hour comedy. And um, Derek Ray, who is the writer, he gave us the permission to actually massage it a little bit and kind of make it our own. So the fact that we were able to kind of really throw in some beats, we wanted it to be more cinematic. He wrote it more like half hour, like I'd mentioned. Um, and so kind of to let it breathe a little bit more and make it our own really helped also with what we wanted to do and how we saw this story being told. And like Kevin said, um, I, you know, am a photographer by trade. So visually and lighting is is definitely my forte. Um, for him, obviously, he's an incredible director and actor, and has all this experience on the sets. <laughs> so that he was able to really, I was able to really learn also just to see him direct actors, which is not something I, I shoot a lot of celebrity portraits, but you know, you know, directing actors in front of us in front of a still camera so different than directing them to really emote emotions that, that they need for scenes. So we learned a lot from each other, um, you know, doing well, this I, have, I, I really want to get to the story because it's such a juicy story. Hey, are you two all right in there? Okay, he's gonna think we're ready to come out and play. I, I just want to know, you say it's based on a true story. Please do tell. <laughs> you know, it's actually it's actually inspired by by um, uh, a situation that a friend of ours had, um, and 
You know, it's, it's like inspired is the right word because it didn't happen, but the idea is entertained, you know? Um, and one of the things that we connected to, to the story in general was, uh, is us being parents. And so this was a, a story of a husband and a wife uh, and a mother and a father who wanted to find a way to just spark up their life again, to see if there's anything missing. And it happened to be in, in, in a situation where they both realized was could, you know, may or may not be more than they bargained for. Um, and so I think a lot of us as parents might get into situations like that. But this is definitely inspired by a, a situation where they got into um, and it was it was it was uh, it was more than they, it was more than they anticipated it was going to be. I, I really wanna, you don't want to say what was, you got into. I, and I don't want to blow it because people should watch it. it I know you're going around the periphery here. <laughs> you, what is I mean, not say, but I'll tell you this: when we were on set, Leslie Ann, um, and by the time Leslie Ann Brant and I started to like really rehearse together, her um, her husband Chris um, is is an acting coach. So he would he would come in and sit on our rehearsals and and uh, help Leslie um, sort of uh, you know communicate with us. And at one point, Leslie Ann just pulled me aside and was like, man, you and Leslie Alejandro are messed up. I know this is based on you. I know it. I, know it. I was like, I'm not saying anything. <laughs> that should be a big team. It is not based on us. Uh, <laughs> the disclaimer. <laughs> no, wait a minute. But... <laughs> the the whole idea of the of the couple that used to be a part, that was a party couple obviously you could tell they were a party couple that is definitely based on us um, and then the idea of trying to figure out how to reconnect with you know party old party habits but being a new parent that was us too so. Mm -hmm. You know that part was based on us us being in a swingers party we related to it. <laughs> How could we be in a swingers party? <laughs> Kevin is Latino. You think that he would me, ever hear me in a swingers I would, party? I would take her to a swingers party in a cage. <laughs> oh. <laughs> it's mine. It's mine. Good you, like a good Latino. Hey, you don't <laughs> Let's be real. Let's be real. <laughs> you guys are too much. What was it doing? I know that you've been getting a lot of attention, and it's been. Um, it was just recently at the Nalif. It screened at Nalif, and you've gone to festivals. Mm -hmm. And was there a prize around there? I think I read. Did you did you oh, get a award? We've been we've been really fortunate to win a couple of. Uh, you know, we won the the uh, the Rincon Puerto Rico uh, Film Festival as the best uh, actor. best actor, best actress, and best short. Um, mm -hmm. We were honored to be an official selection at Nalip at Los Angeles Asian Pacific. Oh, and also uh, um, HBO New York Latinos as well. That yeah, was such an honor too. Yeah, that's what they were just saying. Uh, oh, also. Okay. Um, and we're, and we're currently in the Holly Shorts Film Festival, which is another Oscar qualifying festival. So, you know, we've had a lot of really good attention um, and, uh, you know, the possibility that that was that was our little Alejandro back there. Just wait. Hello. <laughs> that, that, that's not so little Alejandro. <laughs> uh, that's Kate and our son. Well, um, we've been really fortunate and we're having a really great run. Um, well, it's wonderful to also see such a beautiful couple together working mm -hmm. on what they love. But, you know, we've interviewed many other um, filmmaking couples uh, like Patrick Bettis and Cristina Nava from In Other Words. And everybody has their secret on how they work well together. So in a nutshell, what would you say that the Alejandro's secret is? I will tell you from my perspective what my secret is. My secret is not to have an ego and to understand that there are things that she is better at and that I need to just step back and trust that she knows what she's doing and trust that I know what I'm doing. So my secret is to listen and to learn from her. Oh, that's a great one. <laughs> wow. can, you top that, Leslie? can you top that, Leslie? Go for it, I know you can. I think I can top that because- You don't have to, you just, just agree with it. Oh my goodness. No, I, I appreciated that part from him because because you know um, he is who he is, I've I've always had the notion that I had to prove myself um, and and show that I can do things a on my own, and then that that I actually have um, that I know what I'm doing as well, and that it's not him that is carrying me. That you know that we are a partnership. So uh, I had to learn how to 
do the same. I actually do the same because I would get so wrapped up in 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 proving myself that it wasn't about that. I had to let go of my ego and I had to let it um, let it be a collaborative piece. And it was and it really was. It was actually really collaborative with everybody around. Everybody contribute contributed. Um, Todd Sandler, who is our <laughs> producing partner, he he did this with us when we had um, reworked the script. Um, Leslie Ann Brandt and uh, her husband, Chris, like you said, like really came in and and really coached them through the scenes. Nothing but familia when we make movies. We wanted it to feel, we wanted the, the them to feel like they were an actual couple. We wanted the audience to read like they were an actual couple because their chemistry was, you know, um, it, it went without, you know, going notice that, it, it, you know, it was noticeable. Mm -hmm. It was obvious that they had great chemistry, but we wanted our audience to feel that. So we rehearsed it a lot. We did a lot of prep. Um, so yeah, so, you know, for being on this side, it was just kind of like letting him teach me to, because he's the more experienced filmmaker than I am. So you're, you've, you've got this great film. It's in great response. Is there anything in the future that, or you still need some breathing time before you think of your next project? Oh no, we are moving full steam ahead. We mm -hmm. have, we have, uh, our production company, Alejandro Films. Um, and that's myself, my wife, and her sister, my sister-in-law. Um, and like I said, it's nothing but familia when we make movies, and that's the way we run our company as well. So we have some great projects right around the corner that we're working on that are in various stages of development. We're really trying to um, bring recognition and more light to um, both of our heritages. To, both you Latino. Know, he's Mexican-American. I'm Filipino-American. Um, culturally, our our our. our our upbringing and our cultures are very similar. So it's easy for us to tell these stories and intertwine them a little bit just because of, um, of who we are, but actually kind of putting, uh, give it, giving our cultures a platform um, to be able to, to not only just talk about the, you know, the nuances that our, our cultures have, but also to show that it, you know, it doesn't matter um, if you're Filipino American, if you're Mexican American, that you can play roles and be roles and have stories told that we don't that doesn't have to necessarily highlight the culture, but that we are just telling stories that everybody can connect with. Yes. And and by the way, I just want to mention that our family also has a beautiful mix of Mexipinos, we call them. Because <laughs> <laughs> our, our daughter in law is Filipina and two beautiful kids and yes i love that i love that you guys want to put in you know that cultural uh, element because there's so many stories that need to be put out there so congratulations mm -hmm. we want to thank you for coming and spending a little bit of time with us and to tell us about uh, all the great stuff you're you're doing of course we're going to keep watching lucifer you, thank you. Thank you. this is our sixth and final season and uh it's a, it's a good one. And it's Kevin, you directed the oh, yeah. season premiere. I just oh, directed are you kidding? Oh, no. congrats. Yeah. Is this your first directing uh, no. episode? You can see this is my third, actually. I directed the mid-season finale that is currently streaming on Netflix right now off season five. Mm -hmm. So uh, there, are, there, are, there, are six, there are 16 episodes total, but only the first eight have aired. And I'm mm -hmm. the eighth episode of this that will take you into, I introduce a very big character. Um, but yeah, you know, this season is, three uh, and season hmm? and then you also oh, yeah, yeah. season. Three. And then I also directed uh, uh, season three. Um, but yeah, you know, this has been something that both she and I, uh, this passion forever now for the last 10 years um, or more that has just been sort of fueling our souls. And now we're, uh, you know, thank God uh, in a position where we can exercise those and tell our stories and um, surround ourselves with people that we want to tell stories with. Um, and, you know, we have uh, an incredible office located in Santa Monica with incredible people who trust us. Um, <laughs> and uh, I would I just say look forward uh, because we're right around the corner with some really fantastic projects. Wonderful. Yes. So, so wonderful. We want to thank you so much again for being with us. And uh, don't go away. Up next is Eileen Galindo. Our next guest is such a terrific actress, be it on stage, behind a mic, or in film. Please welcome our friend Eileen Galindo. Hi, ladies. Bienvenida. It's so good yeah. to see you on you. camera and off camera. So <laughs> I wanted you, you 
have some of the greatest roles uh, on TV and film. And uh, before we get into how you get those roles, tell us a little bit about your background and tell us about working with Chita Rivera. Oh, I was born in New York and uh, we uh, moved around a lot. I ended up going to high school and college in Miami and uh, started working in Miami as a, actually as my, my first, one of my first big gigs was being a showgirl on a Royal Caribbean cruise ship. So, you know, big 20 pound headdress and the whole nine and G strings. This was back in the eighties. All right. And then I got off that contract and then got my equity card doing Shakespeare at the Coconut Grove Playhouse. So, um, yeah, I've always kind of been to the extremes. Uh, and I came to California in 2000. I knew in 1999 I'd done this play for Lisa Loomer called Expecting Isabel and uh, the tape with the tape at the taper. And they had me come to L.A. And then I just kept working. And so I, you know, put sheets over my furniture in New York and just stayed and stayed and stayed. And then uh, the uh, reading for uh, the House of Bernarda Alba came along. And originally when we did the reading, it was um, Tyne Daly playing uh, Bernarda and uh, Elizabeth Peña was my sister on Gustias. And what, by the time we got to the point of production, I think Tyne was still doing a TV show at the time, so she wasn't available. And Gordon Davidson convinced Cheetah to come and do the play. And it was amazing. Yeah. It was amazing to work with such a legend. She, she really taught me what it is to be a legend and demystified that thing for me. So I don't get overly impressed by you know, when I meet a star, or meet, you know, meet a celebrity or something like that, or even or even an actor, a colleague, I don't get uh, overly surprised or overly, you know, excited. I just, she's really so down to earth that she, you know, she says, you know, you can, you can be a fan of somebody's work, but you don't really know them. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you can't say, um, you know, oh, I love your work. Because you, know, you could say I love your work, but you can't say I love you. Sorry, I just got somebody just tried to call me in here, so I'm there. We go. That's okay. It's probably your agent, and hopefully uh, uh, sending you a, a message about another amazing project like the one I want to ask you about. Um, oh my gosh, I loved you this summer in the binge. Can we talk about this character? Okay, how did you prepare for this part? That I just knew what the character was. And then I went in and worked with the designer. With I, I work a lot from the exterior in. And I sort of work from the outside in and the inside out. So uh, with the costume designer, she showed me some ideas of what she was thinking. She, she showed me a photograph of Edith Head. And you'll see a lot of times on my Instagram when I'm uh, preparing for a job, I'll start to put together these collages. And I'll, I'll put them on Instagram, you know, because it's about... Um, me sort of finding my way to the character. Oh. So she gave me that picture of Edith Head, and then she showed me some of the costumes she had uh, had picked, and then we started looking at that one. That doesn't work. Uh, the glasses were amazing. Um, they had seen me do another show called Now Apocalypse, where I wore these glasses, and uh, they said, yeah, we definitely want to have you wear glasses. But by the time we got to shooting, we realized, okay, Deidre – she doesn't need the glasses. Like everything else is there. Let's just take those away. You know, it's like put put it all on, then take one thing off. You know, so so yeah. So that's how I came to it. And then the rest was just sort of us um, riffing. I mean, he. I, if I say we did twenty five takes of that scene, I'm not. I'm not exaggerating. Good morning, American High. America, a few years from now, prosperous, clean, and sober except one night a year when all drugs and alcohol are legal. Andrew here? You guys cops? I have friends, Mom. Why don't you believe me? Probably because your tendency towards violence got us banned from the church. I'll bury you behind a jiffy loop and my friends are going to help me. We will not be doing that. But you also use your voice to entertain. You do all of these cartoon characters. Tell us about some of those and also... Um, doing the film festival circuit, I guess, with the characters? Yeah, the the first um, cartoon that I did, I did when I, oof, 
Well, I did my first one when I was 25, uh, one called Troubles with Cat with Rosie Perez. And then I auditioned for this. I got a, an audition where my agent said, okay, just call and leave a voicemail on, on Nickelodeon's, this cast director's voicemail. So I called, left a message. My agent called back, said, okay, you got this job. It turned out to be Dora the Explorer. Wow. And none of us knew what it was at the time. Um, the first year we just, you know, I, we laid down everything and um, uh, Kathleen Hurley's was my door, my daughter at the time. I play the mom on Dora the Explorer. And uh, that was like 1999. And like I said, 2000, I came to Los Angeles and they had to record me from here, which at that time was not as common doing patches, from New York, California, was was not as common. They would do it if you were a celebrity, but not if you were just a BO actor. So I did that for a couple of years, and then they the the producer Chris Gifford wanted somebody there in New York, so he recast my part with with a friend of mine who sounds very much like me, and she played it I think for a couple of seasons. And then when Chris went to go spend his billions, um, the new executive producer called back and said, you know, it's never been the same without you. Would you please come back? So. Um, so I ended up coming back. And um, tell us about this film that you have in the Holly Shorts right now. Oh, The Letter Room, a wonderful little film. Um, Oscar Isaac is a dear friend. He played my son in a play over 20 years ago before he became a big giant star. And we've always kept in touch and throughout the whole process, you know, the process throughout his whole journey. And I've always, you know, whenever he's had a win, I've always, you know, sent him a message to say, I'm so proud of you. And um I was supposed to, I was on hold. <laughs> I got hired and fired from Spielberg's West Side Story twice last year. So <laughs> I was on hold for West Side Story and I was supposed to, I was in New York. I was kind of going back and forth between New York and LA. And um, I, I got the final call that the part that I was going to play in West Side Story was getting cut. And I was just devastated. But I already had all of my arrangements to be in New York out of the blue Oscar calls and says, you know, my wife and I are doing this little film and I have a part for you. And I said, well, I have a plane ticket. So this works out. And, um, we did it in a couple of days and it was, it's a wonderful little film about, a, a guy that works in the letter room at a maximum security prison. And I play the warden of the prison. But we're so excited about why women kill. Tell us about it's that. So good. Oh, it's so good. I don't know if any of you guys have seen the first season. Mark Cherry has created this amazing anthology show, and the show takes place in 1949 this year. Last year, it took place in the same house in Pasadena over three different eras. This mm -hmm. one takes place all in 1949, and it uh, follows the story of Alma Philcott. She's a woman who is an avid gardener and wants to become a member of the Hancock Park Gardening Society. Um, and it, it, the, the show really looks at what it means to be beautiful. Uh, what's the hidden truth behind the facades that people put up? Um, and, and what lengths people will go to to be a part of something. Oh, wow. So it is really a wonderfully, wonderfully crafted show. And um, when does I, it when does it begin airing? It'll begin airing in summer, the summer of 2021. And let me just say, I you know when I first got the breakdown for this, I play a maid. So when I got sent the breakdown, I was like, oh hell no, you know. <laughs> and then I read it because I knew it was Mark Cherry. Well, let me read it. Right. And I went, oh my god, this is not what it seems to be. And when we worked on the backstory of these characters, the fact this is 1949, these characters are born, you know, uh, 1919, 1920, you know, actually, no, turn of the century. So, yeah, and then, yeah, she's born about 1905, 1906. So, um, you know, we we really developed the story. The backstories are very, very complex for all of the characters in this show. And um, the texture and the layering is incredible. It's something you can only get when you do either a film or in this case, an anthology show. And that's the reason why Mark wanted to do it is that he didn't want to be beholden anymore to that formula where you have to get to the end of the season and build up to a certain thing and then try to bring viewers back for the next year. 
you know, with this, he's got the freedom. Great. So this will be on uh, CBS Access. And we could do a whole new show with you just talking about the trajectory and your activism. But we need to say goodbye now. And thank you. need to talk to other people. It's fine. I understand. <laughs> Whatever. We'll have you back because you're such an interesting person. We love you. I mean, you. it's not like I got anything to do today. <laughs> you like my eyebrows? I got new eyebrows. Okay. Okay. I think the bull man needs you. <laughs> what? Tell the, the pool man. man. You're all his now. Tell the pool man I'm all yours now. Yes. It's cold. He's not even wearing his speedo. <laughs> as long as he's not wearing a maschini like Barat, you're good. Oh my gosh. Thank you so much, Eileen. So wonderful to see you. <laughs> Likewise. So we'll be right back with the Trend Talk Trendsetter shout out. Today's Trend Talk Trendsetter shout out goes to sanamente.org. Did you know that 20% of U.S. born Latinos have suffered a mental health challenge this year? Let's prevent the challenge from becoming a crisis. If you or someone you love needs support, information, or resources, contact sanamente.org. We want to thank our guest, Eileen Galindo and Los Alejandros. Remember to follow us on Instagram at The Trend Talk Show. And also remember, if it's trending, we're talking. Oh.